So let's kick off chapter three with a, a pretty basic start. We're going to talk about the additions and licensing for SQL Server 2012. This is going to be a long video. There is, you know, I, I know this is an intro level course, but there's a lot to cover when we're talking about additions and licensing. Just additions alone is a lot to cover in licensing. Forget it. <laughs> That's, people make full careers out of licensing, right? So let's start here. And then we'll work our way towards installing, configuring, and upgrading slash updating SQL Server 2012. Okay? So that'll be the rest of the chapter. Let's just kick it off here. Okay? So we'll do additions and licensing. Then we'll get into the installations here. Okay? Now, I just have to kind of start this out the right way. <laughs> this is hard stuff that we're talking about. Okay? Once you go and you buy your edition and you choose your licensing model. That's not something that you can call up and say, hey, I made, a, uh, I made a mistake. Can I trade this in and get credit for something else? So you need to make sure you do this the right way, okay? This is just an intro to SQL 2012 class, right? So I'm not going to go into full-blown details on a lot of this. My role, remember this, we talked about it in Chapter 1, my role here is to give you just enough information to give you an overview, and then we're off to the next topic, okay? So that's kind of what we're going to do. If you really have specific questions about licensing or additions, I have links at the end of this presentation. This video does include the PDF with it, okay? You can look at those, or you can contact your VAR, your VAR, Value Added Reseller, Okay. Or if you have a Microsoft contact, you can directly talk to them uh, as hopefully they will be able to give you the right info. Okay, here we go. We have some new additions. We have some changes in the additions from prior versions. Uh, we have a very different licensing scheme with respect to particularly CPU licensing in 2012. The intro course is just going to give you a basic idea. But we will go into a lot more depth, like in the DBA course, for example, we'll talk much more detail about licensing and virtualization and how uh, you'll calculate cores if you're migrating from software assurance. Um, we'll talk uh, you know, in the analysis services course about the various differences between the business intelligence edition and the enterprise edition and so forth, right? Intro course, just giving you an overview, okay? Now, the addition determines which features are available. We've kind of talked about this a little bit. The maximum hardware resources that we can use. How the service responds to events. So let's say that you request a query over a partitioned database. How is SQL Server going to handle that partition table? Okay, uh, And various feature-specific tweaks and options like you know what features of replication would be supported by each edition, right? Okay. So let's get into the additions, okay? Enterprise, standard, BI edition. Hey, that's new in 2012, okay? Web, developer, express, and evaluation, okay? Now, you notice SQL Server Compact is not listed on here, and technically it still is an addition here, but overview course, not really going to talk too much about this. But let's talk a little bit about some of these. We're not going to cover every single one of them here. The Enterprise Standard and Business Intelligence Editions, these are the ones that you're most likely to encounter in a production environment. Microsoft calls these the principal editions. They're the ones that are going to cost you the most money. Okay. Now, the Web Edition is a special edition. If you were a web host, this is the one that you would actually install. This is the one you would buy and license. Okay. Uh, the Developer Express and Evaluation, Microsoft considers these the breadth editions. They're trying to get this product in as many hands as they possibly can, so they make these available. Okay. Now, let's just kind of walk through, like I said, each of uh, the big ones here. So let's talk about the EE, Enterprise Edition. This is the big boy. Okay. There's no more Data Center Edition in 2012. That was sort of a I wouldn't call that a failed experiment, but they just didn't get enough people on board to make that happen here. Uh, so now we're back to Enterprise Edition being the top dog. Okay? It has all the features, and it supports the most hardware. Okay? This is what you'll be running your terabyte size databases with, your 500 gigabyte databases and up. Uh, 
or this is the server that you would use if you had the most high availability slash disaster recovery needs. Okay, you have mission critical databases that you can't suffer downtime on. You're going to be using Enterprise Edition. Okay, so it has the full support of every feature of all the different parts of SQL Server. Okay, now the Developer Edition is the exact same piece of software, but just with a different licensing requirement. Okay? So the developer edition, like in the US, you can buy this. You can go to you know any store you wish to that sells Microsoft SQL Server. You can buy developer edition for about $50. Okay? You might also get it if you are a member of TechNet or your company uh, is a member of MSDN. So you can go to the MSDN downloads and get that as well. Okay? Now this is what I'm going to use for our course here. Okay? I want to have all of the features, but I'm not using this in a production setting. Okay? We're using this in a development setting, so we're going to use the developer edition. Now standard edition is what most of your small and mid-sized companies are going to be using. Okay? This still has the support for the large databases, 100 gig, 200 gig, 300 gig even, right? The reporting services, analysis services, integration services, uh, SQL Server data tools, all of that is included. Okay? And we have fewer limitations conceptually uh, than we did in previous versions. No more 4 GB limit. Now we can go up to 64 gigs of RAM. There are some CPU limits uh, that you'll see here on the next slide. Now, here's the new edition. Okay? The only new edition in 2012 is the BI edition, the Business Intelligence uh, edition. Okay? And you can somewhat see, I mentioned that standard has this uh, limit. Notice that we have 16 cores as the limitation today. Okay? So that's a little bit different. But you can somewhat see a gradient way where we kind of go from standard, then we have a few more features supported in the BI edition, and then all of the features are supported in the enterprise edition, right? So the business intelligence, you can look at it down here. You can see like these are the ones that it says that it has, okay? So these are available only in BI and Enterprise. They're not available in the Standard Edition. Okay, And you can review that again if you pull up the PDF for this course here. Okay. Now the Express Edition, I know a lot of people uh, through the years of taking my courses use the Express Editions. This is the completely free version of SQL Server 2012. It supports a lot of the features. Not all of them, though. We, we kind of talked about this in Chapter 1. I said if you want to have the Express Edition, that's fine. You'll get about 90% of the course, but you won't be able to participate. You won't be able to follow along in integration services and analysis services, right? Okay. Now, there are limitations with the free version, right? You can have either one socket or four cores per instance. You can only get one gig of memory, and your databases have to be 10 gigs or less. Okay? But still, it's free. And those are, I think, very, very um, generous limits. I think the one that you will run into the most is the memory. Right? It's hard to have a 10 gigabyte database that's actively used and only needs or needs less than one gigabyte of RAM. That one gigabyte of RAM, by the way, includes the database. It includes all of the necessary memory to run SQL Server. Uh, so really, per database, it's somewhere going to be around 700 megs or something like that. Okay? So you don't get the full uh, uh, gig. Now, you can download it in the PDF. I have a link uh, to the Express Edition here. Uh, one other new feature in 2012 is the idea of local DB. And local DB, is, we're not really going, going to cover that in this particular course. This is a specialized piece of the SQL Server puzzle, I think. This, if you're familiar with the SQL Server Compact Edition, this is another alternative for that. So it's kind of a lightweight single database version of SQL Server. Doesn't have any configuration or anything like that. You simply you use the SQL DB lo SQL local DB dot exe, and you issue the create statement, and that then creates an instance of SQL local DB, 
And then when you're ready to start it, you issue the start command to it. And then from within your applications, your C Sharp, your Visual Basic, even ASP.NET, you can now reference local DB. Okay. So this is a new feature. This is really part of the Express edition. Okay. So this is not something that's part of Enterprise or Standard or any of the other editions here. Okay. But it's a pretty, pretty neat uh, idea. Now, I do find it somewhat challenging the way that Microsoft has named the SQL Express editions and how convoluted the download process is. There's actually several download pages up on Microsoft where you can download the various components of Express. I took a screenshot here of one of them, and I just find this to be really, really challenging. Uh, oops, hit the wrong button, sorry. Um, Right here, you can download SQL Server Express with tools, okay? Now, this includes LocalDB, the Database Engine, and Management Studio Express. Management Studio Express is the free version of the SQL Server Management Studio, right? Okay. It does not include reporting services, integration services, analysis services, the SQL Server agent. All of that stuff is not included in this one, okay? Then you have the Management Studio Express. So this is the only the tools. Okay. All right. Great. So not SQL Server data tools, though. That's a separate download. Okay. Now you have just local DB. Okay. And then you have finally down here, we get reporting services with SQL Server. And so if you want to experiment with, you know, if you want to download SQL Server Express so that you can do this course, this would be the one you would get. And then finally, SQL Server Express, which only has the database engine, no tools in it at all. Okay. So I find that very, very confusing. It might be worth spending a few minutes on there, maybe a, an hour, trying to understand what all they have going on here. Uh, real quick, we'll kind of tidy up here with the additions. You know, I always suggest to people, you know, starting in, I don't know, 2008 and going forward, uh, you always want to use 64-bit whenever you can. Um, I've even read, and I'm sure it's it's out there on the CSS blogs and such. But I know that future, I know that it's been said in conferences, future versions of SQL Server may no longer support 32-bit in the next version. Right? We've seen that with the Exchange folks, the Microsoft Exchange. Uh, so SQL Server, it is coming. So you may as well migrate to 64-bit. Uh, as part of your process. Okay. Now let's talk about licensing. And this is where I'm going to be the most brief. Uh, licensing is hard. Okay, this is, people make their whole careers based on licensing Microsoft products, right? I mean, it's super complicated. There are calculators that you can use, Excel spreadsheets that you have to go through, and you put in how many users and what they're going to be doing, and then it spits out some way for you to say, okay, well, you need this type of licensing or that type of licensing. So again, intra-level course, right? I, I have links here at the end that I'm going to provide that will go into much more detail and you can use core factor tables and all kind of fanciness to figure out what's best for you. Okay. But let's just talk about how you license your server. Okay. You can buy a license per client or you can buy a license per CPU. So let's talk about these. We'll talk about the client side first. These are called CALs, Client Access Licenses. Okay? It requires a separate CAL for each device slash user that is concurrently accessing the server. Now what I mean by that, let's say that you have John and you have Mary and they each have one device, their laptop computer. Okay? Let's say John connects to SQL Server. He needs to have one cow. You need to have a spare cow available for John to do that. When Mary connects at the same time, now you have to have two cows. Okay? Now, if John disconnects and now it's only Mary, this we're just now back to one cow. Now, if Steve comes along and Steve wants to connect, can he connect? If you have two cows and only Mary is on, yes, because now you still only have two concurrent users okay so this is sufficient when you have a real small department you have 10 people 15 people that are connecting right it's not going to work for a web site where you don't know how many people are going to connect right 
that's when we want to get into the CPU licensing side of things, okay? Unlimited connections per license. We don't care how many people. Okay? Once you've licensed that CPU, unlimited. We don't care Mary, John, Steve, you know, whoever can come in, okay? Now, one big change in 2012 is that licensing is now done at the core. In 2008, in R2, in or 2008, in 2005, it was always done at the socket level, okay? So remember, a socket can have multiple cores, dual core, quad core, hex core, right? So today, it's at the core level. If you have a one socket, four core CPU, you have to buy four CPU licenses today. Now, the CPU licenses are cheaper than what a socket license was for 2008, for example. Okay, So you might have paid, I don't know, $25,000. i am just going to put a number out there today. Uh, $25,000 per socket in SQL Server 2005, but you might only pay $6,800 per core in 2012. Okay, So it's a, a bit of a different model, uh, but it ends up being a little bit more expensive uh, but, you know, time marches on. So what are you going to do? Okay. <laughs> so that's the big licensing change. I have some very good links here uh, that are to the, the meat of the matter, if you will. Like the thing I hate about going to the Microsoft SQL Server page is that it's so much marketing fluff. I, I, I struggle to get through it all. These are the direct links to what I think are the pages that matter the most, that give you the most information in the least amount of fluffiness. Right? So I, I would suggest you get the PDF and click through to these. Um, I, I will tell you the licensing guide. Whew, um, yeah, that's, that's not fun reading. <laughs> All right. So let's talk in the next video about the decisions that you have to make before you install SQL 2012.